This video will show you how to add earthquake forces in CADAM 3D. I already have a gravity section defined. Now if I go into the loadings menu and I click earthquake, I get this dialog window. There's three different methods for the seismic evaluation. The first one is a pseudo-static method, the seismic coefficient. And the other two methods here, Chopras and Bonani, are pseudo-dynamic method, or if you prefer, spectral method. So I'm going to select first the seismic method. I click parameter and I have, have four tabs here to uh, set up my uh, parameters. So the first tab is acceleration, where you're going to set up your peak acceleration for the stress analysis and the sustain acceleration for the stability analysis. So you have PGA here horizontally and vertically, and you have sustain acceleration, which is correspond to a fraction of the GPA. The peak acceleration are used for the cracking analysis. And once this cracking is uh, computed, it is reported to the stability analysis. And then we use the sustain acceleration to compute the safety factor. The hydrodynamic, you can consider water compressibility if you have a uh, reservoir depth where Western Guard pressure remains constant, you can set it up here. And this is not applying here for the gravity section. So apply hydrodynamic in front of inlet. This is only for the intake section. Face is inclination. So when you have an inclination onto the upstream face, there's many correction method to correct for the uh, hydrodynamic forces. So you can use General Westergaard, no correction, uh, cost square, Corns et al., and Zanger. Zanger is a more complex method, but it's taken care by CADAM 3D inside here. So, and finally, you have the hydrostatic. If you want to have the vertical acceleration, that will change the horizontal hydrostatic pressure during the earthquake. So that would be the seismic coefficient. If now go to the other two method, it's pretty much the same dialog window. So I'm going to select one any and Mikkel method. So I'm going to click on parameters. Now it's a more exhaustive uh, dialog window. Um, since it's a pseudo, -stat pseudo dynamic method, thus it's a spectral method, you need to enter a spectrum into this. And we need to compute the natural frequency of the dam and the first uh, uh, mode damping as well for the dam reservoir foundation system. So acceleration here can be entered by use of a response spectrum. So if I click this, then I can set up my response spectrum here. Uh, by default, the period of my structure was computed at 0.07 seconds, and the damping was at 9.2% of damping. This is corresponding uh, for the reservoir foundation structure interaction. Now I can set up the my spectrum here. So I have already four points defined. I can change those. I can delete them. I can edit them. So now I'm going to select the first one at 0 0.05 seconds and put a spectrum of 0.5 Gs. So I'm going to click on modify. So it does increase that point and then proceed with the next one, modify, 15 and modify. So I can set up as many points as I like. I can, I, I can, I can add as well another point into the spectrum, which would be in between those two here. And I can set up at 0.2 Gs. So I press add and I just add 
this new point into the spectrum. So now from that spectrum, what I have is a spectral acceleration of 0.299 Gs. This is corresponding to the natural frequency of my dam foundation reservoir system, natural frequency and damping as well. But if you find that damping way too high, you can modify it as you wish to any value that you like. And since normally the spectrum is based on a 5% damping, the spectral adjustment that is done to get from 5% to the damping that is shown here can be uh, adjusted uh, with different type of method. These methods are presented into the user's manual. Now, peak ground acceleration. Now I can set up my peak ground acceleration at 0.2 Gs and vertical peak ground acceleration, I would put it as two thirds of this. And the reduction factor for sustained acceleration at 0.5. So if you are on the east uh, side of North America, I would suggest you to use a 0.5. So it will uh, use sustained acceleration as half of the peak acceleration. If you are on the western side of North America, I would suggest you to use 0.67. And then I click OK. So all these numbers are now entered here for the peak acceleration and the sustained acceleration. You can always come back to that dialog window. You can change your damping as wish, and these numbers will be updated every time. Now let's go to the dam model. So number of division for the analysis, since we're doing finite element modeling here, you can divide your structures into 51 levels. So if you play with this number, you might see the natural frequency slightly changes, but not, not much so far. In fact, it doesn't change really much here. Okay, so you don't have to go with, with a lot of division here. Uh, the concrete uh, dynamic Young's modulus has to be set up here. And if you have uh, uh, the damping of your structures only, it should be set up here. So you can change that to 0 0.02 here. Okay, and then it will change your damping here. Okay, and then going back to the spectrum, it will update your accelerations. Go back to dam. You can view the first mode that was computed by CADAM 3D. If you click the button here, that it says the red line here would be corresponding to the cubic that is going to be used into Buonani and Mikhail method. And while the black one is the finite element evaluation, this is the mode shape, in fact, of your first mode. For the reservoir, you can use either incompressible or compressible water. Please note that compressible water will increase the hydrodynamic effect on the structure. You must specify the velocity of pressure waves, which pretty much uh, this value. And if you have a vertical acceleration effect on horizontal hydrostatic pressure, you just click this. So pretty much the vertical acceleration will reduce the gravity and will do and, and thus reduce the hydrostatic pressure. Foundation, you can set up your foundation here. So if you have a foundation that is way more stiffer than your structure, this will change for sure your uh, your overall uh, first mode here. So now we have a 0 0.063. If I go back to same values, okay, and exit this, now I have 0 0.071 seconds. And the esteritic damping, it can range from 0.5 up to 0 0.01. So we can set it up at 0 0.05 like this. And this is according to uh, Chopra's method or Buonani method. This is all explained into the user's manual. So every time you change this, you should go back 
into your spectrum and update your accelerations here. So once you have done this, you have defined your earthquake. And that's it.